This is Getting Past Subtitles. My name is Sean Peel. And I'm DK Lee. And welcome to a new series. Welcome to a fresh start. If you're jumping into the channel for the first time, uh, it's a good place to start. Yep. You know, new kinda, series. New series. We like to kind of pave the way on a new road. Um, this is going to be a good one. This should be an interesting one. We're going to talk about love, romance, all the butterflyly feeling things. Yeah. <laughs> the unrealistic. <laughs> the, <laughs> the definitely happens in real life. This might be more in line with the uh, fantasy <laughs> films. <laughs> <laughs> ba -doom -doom. Yeah. Uh, yes, we are doing all romance uh, films. Um, we talked about the slate of films on the last episode, so uh, go check that out. And at the end of this, we'll be talking about that. Uh, but this week, we're kicking it off, and we watched... Um, the classic. Classic. So I don't have it, have it right there. Why do you think this movie is called the classic, by the way? Like, the title really has nothing to relate to. There's that one, like, throwaway line in the beginning when she's like... I'm reading the letters and she's yeah. like, Oh, this is so like cheesy. Like, and then she's like yeah. yeah. And then she's like, Oh, wait, I'll, I'll say it's class. It's like a classic, like a classic love story, like classic uh. romance kind of thing. So I guess that's where they got the name from. Mm. Uh, but like, it, even when I was watching it, I, I felt, I felt like it was a lot of the romantic tropes yes. that they play. Mm -hmm on in this movie like it has everything <laughs> yeah yeah it, it so is I, like I, a I, pinnacle of like i feel like that's why they yeah. called it like the classic well that's why i didn't i don't know if it's like is this kind of just a nod to like oh i just made a very classical romance movie you know i'm just gonna call it the classic or is yeah there something that is something like rooted in the story a little bit that's why i just mm. wasn't too clear on yeah i don't think it was necessarily rooted in the story but i think Maybe the director kind of wanted to um, do a romance that's very typical yeah. <laughs> of and and uh, you know going you know with the typical tropes of the romance genre and I think that this movie definitely has uh, heaps heaps and of, bounds. of those kinds of uh, tropes <laughs> in it. So it's a trash pile of mm. romance cliches for sure. Um, yeah, so the person talking about the director is a uh, Jae Young Kwang Kwak Kwak. Uh, this came out in two thousand three, so you know it's kind of an oldie, as expected of Lee. It's choice mm -hmm. <laughs> pre twenty ten. Yes. Don't worry, the next Very. one's gonna be uh, <laughs> two thousand something too, <laughs> early two thousands. Um, and yeah, so I I thought I didn't know much, but then after some digging. He did My Sassy Girl, yeah. apparently. And uh, a lot of things kind of made sense <laughs> once I put the dots together. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, this this definitely feels like in the vein of that style. You know, if he has a style anyway. Like, it just feels like, okay, that's him. As particularly the comedy. Because that's one thing that I don't want to say, like, threw me way off in the movie. But it's just like quirky kind of goofy weird comedy i feel like the the uh way that he does his resolutions in the movie mm. is very typical sure of like and and kind of reminiscent of my sassy girl right um especially that like um that moment when the main protagonist and the female protagonist like meet together and they have their little dialogue thing like for example, for he in this movie, it was when he comes back from Vietnam. Yeah, and uh, they're in that like little restaurant or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and yeah. he like acts like he's not blind and like does that thing, right, that right. whole like spiel. And like in my sassy girl, there's that moment when um, the main character I forget his name, but he like uh, is meeting. Yeah. He has a meeting. She the girl has a meeting with another guy. Yeah, yeah. and then like, like while the guy goes, yeah, yeah, while the guy goes to the bathroom, he like starts like telling <laughs> him her him about like all the like he, things that she likes and she doesn't like and whatever. Uh, so that kind of like that kind of moment, I feel like he he kind of puts in his movies a lot. It's like a in, well, at least like a surprise two. kind of or like a. 
I don't want to say like a twist, even though it kind of it is, is like a, a twist. twist. Yeah, it is a but, twist, but yeah. it's kind of like that a moment of like, oh, like they really love each other, kind of like right. that kind of thing. Just like it's like the emotional like romance twist part. It's like mm-hmm. I'm I'm here to like stick an emotion out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That that emotional almost climax. Right, right. Of the movie. Yeah, that was that was definitely in that one. We could talk about that scene later too, yeah. <laughs> in particular. But but yeah, once I once I figured out some, I was like, oh yeah, this this kind of makes more sense of like the choices wise. When I was when I was watching, I was like, oh, okay, that that seems like his thing. Um, but other than that, um, I mean, a few other things, but nothing that I really know of of yet. But this movie was made right after A Sassy Girl, actually, too. So this was like. Like literally right after. Yep. Um, but yeah, so some notable names in the movie as well, I guess. In the past, anyway. I don't know if they're like. I haven't seen them around lately. There was I w- there was only like one person that I recognized in this movie, Ooh. and that was the teacher. Teacher. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, the, the, the teacher. Yeah, yeah. I seen oh. him around a few times, but I mean, they're all really famous, though. Like mm. all the the characters in this movie, the actors in this movie. I know you said he um. I mean, well, the the lead uh, who is played by Sonia Jing, she's she's gonna be in the next movie. You watch, right? So, yeah, Miss Romance herself. Yes, uh, the guy um, yeah. is famous as well. Uh, the guy in the past, he's a little older, but <clears throat> he's he's you know he's known as a really good actor. <clears throat> and the younger guy um, in the present. He's also, um, he's like very famous because, you know, he's good looking and stuff like that. Sure, but, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, you know, one bin probably should have made one of those rules. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's actually very, um, like he's very private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, even when he picks like movies, it's very sparse. Like he hasn't done like a movie in a really oh, long time. And you got to send like the script that. by like an owl. And, and I, he has a very specific like he he he, ha, he plays very specific roles. I feel like uh, mm-hmm. I mean like there's like specific characters that he likes to play. You know, right, right. And anyways, that's like anyway, totally. Off topic. <laughs> that's a, that was a different conversation. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So why don't you tell us about when you kind of first watched this? What your experience was like? Why you decided to bring it uh, back? I don't remember when I first watched it. To be honest. Mm-hmm. Um. But I do remember watching it sometime in the past. <laughs> uh, I mean, this movie is very famous um, because it's it's like very like a classic romance movie, right. especially in Korea, and so it has a lot of cultural like meaning, like cultural significance in in, in like Korean cultural like, um, it, especially in like the inter- entertainment kind of. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. yeah, entertainment like culture. Oh, sure. Like, there's a lot of parodies of like the uh, umbrella, like the <laughs> umbrella, <laughs> the, the under jacket, the jacket <laughs> under the <laughs> under the rain scene and stuff like that. Right. And the music is very like iconic, so like they use that as like a <laughs> way of like parodying it as well. How many times do we have to hear like the same classic? cool song oh like in a korean film well i mean i'm tired of li- listening to like canon in d <laughs> over and well, over that's because uh he specifically <laughs> the director specifically <laughs> uses it all uh, right even in my sassy girl it's the same uh but we saw like secret like same piano like, piece yeah i feel like uh, we've seen a few like if there's romance in it there's some kind of like random classical piece yeah I mean, it's gonna be always. I feel like classical music is like the cliche. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll always be there some somehow. Um, but uh, what what was my? Uh, Where are you going with that? Yeah. What was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like oh, so first when I first yeah. watched it, yeah. Uh, I don't really remember when I first watched it, but it it does have a very uh, significant cultural, like you know. Yeah. Um, there's a big cultural significance um this movie so uh yeah it's it's just in the in the like uh cultural like you know mind right so safe to say like everybody in your family has seen it probably but <laughs> that's the reason why i picked it just cuz sure. it's it's like uh mostly everybody has seen it yeah it's just like a very 
like iconic co- uh romance movie mm-hmm. if like this movie w- would probably be um representative of like the early 2000s and then there's like another yeah. movie um called architecture 101 i think or intro to architecture 101 mm-hmm. is another korean movie but that's like um i think in the 2010s era Okay. And I and that's like representative of the romance movies of the t- 2010s. I <laughs> the feel new like. era, yeah, the, the new, new era, the new generation of yeah. romance. Yeah, so new like the 2010 generation of romance would be that movie as a representative. Uh, and I feel like this movie probably would be this movie or My Sassy Girl would be representative of, of like the early 2000s. Yeah, I mean, like watching this movie, it feels like sort of every other movie that was made in this time era in Korea. Like, I mean, it shares a lot of similarities with My Sassy Girl. Um, Even, like, Teguki. Mm. Like, they all have, like, a very similar, like, vibe vibe to them, (laughs) right? Yeah. Yeah. And it just does feel like kind of the era piece. And also even just, like, the setting and the time that they were made kind of feels like they're all made around the same time a little bit, right? Yeah. It's either, like, it actually it's usually kind of both, where it's, like, modern early 2000s and then like in the past like you know 60s or yeah 70s or wherever those that kind of time period is right mm-hmm. um so they all kind of deal with that so all kind of feel the same and they all have like a weird like fantasy like feel to them yeah right like you said they, i mean Most magical yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a fairy tale yeah like a, a fairy yeah, tale yeah, yeah. like it's being told in that sort of in that vein yeah exactly uh and this one is definitely no stranger to that yeah um i mean for me i mean this is my first time watching it um i, I did see my sister girl a few times uh, that i talked about in the past but i haven't seen this one and you know it's like it's just okay i guess for me <laughs> it's it's mid is <laughs> it's, 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 it's how we say um like like it's just flat good like it's entertaining really i don't think any more or anything less it's not like a teary-eyed romance or drama, right? I think it definitely tries to overextend some scenes into doing that. And it just depends on, like, you, if that works on you or not. But, like, we talked about the movie, just is so much bringing out the cliches and is so much, like, in that sort of genre that it's easy to predict the movie and easy to kind of, like, oh, it's it's just playing this by the book. So it doesn't really work when it's trying to i guess reach out more for me if that makes any sense you know what i mean it's like once you understand the genre and the cliches then i'm just like not phased by anything else after that yeah right but not to say that that's necessarily a negative thing but but like i said it's entertaining like it's it's kind of doing what it's doing and it's doing it fine Mm. so it's i mean it's a good movie um but it's not like groundbreaking or anything yeah, but I can kind of see, like I said, like everything I talked about before, it definitely just feels like, oh yeah, this is definitely the romance of the of this kind of era and place and time. Mm. But so it is your week. Yeah, we have this Bible that you <laughs> showed me earlier. Bible. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I will go over the synopsis for today. Uh, it's a little long, <laughs> but uh, I'll try my best to make it quick. It's kind of convoluted. It's not that convolutedly. Come on. So uh, the classic <laughs> is a movie. Um, so in the in the present day, Chie stumbles upon a box of letters and a diary of her mother, and she reads them. And as she reads them, we go back into the past and relive the mother's story. So the movie goes um, between the past and the present and interweaves the stories yeah. of both the mother and the daughter. And the mother's name is Juhi. And in the past, Juhi, she visits the countryside where she meets a boy named Junha. And they find out they're, they're both from the same town and they're visiting the countryside. And Juhi asks Junha if, you know, if she's, he's ever been to a haunted house that's nearby. Yeah. And so she asks him to um, take her there um, by boat and down the river. And so they both go and they have fun and they, you know, kind of, you know, get to know each other, get closer. And while they're returning back, she sprains her ankle. And uh, so they kind of stay at a little resting place for a little bit. 
and then they go back by boat but um it's like nighttime now yeah. and her parents are like mad at him right or furious uh because of you know her being hurt but also like her being out for so long right. and her going to the haunted <clears throat> house where she's not supposed to be and so because of that uh jun ha kind of gets you know kind of gets the brunt of it right. and uh but before she leaves she gives her him a necklace and uh so chuna keeps the necklace and then after that chuna comes back from the countryside back to the town um it's called suwon i think and yeah. he is a good writer so a lot of it a lot of his friends kind of ask him to write letters like love letters for people right because right. back then you know they used to exchange a lot of letters and so one of his friend named tesu is in an arranged like relationship with this girl yeah. and chuna asked to uh he asked chuna to write a letter for for him to send to the girl and uh tesu reveals to him that it's actually chuhi um who is her parents are like like uh um, oh, yeah congressmen they're like officials um in in the government so she's kind of you know very protected <laughs> a politics child and and, and um, tesu that's why tesu is like being arranged <coughs> to marry her yeah. eventually and so chuna seeing the picture of of her um, he still agrees to, you know, to um, write the letters, and so she, he starts exchanging letters with with uh, Chuhi. And later on, uh, Tesu introduces Chunha to Chuhi um, at a gathering, um, yeah. like a, you know, like they used to like it's like a school presentation, like a, right? Yeah, school presentation, but also like there was like a blind date that they went on, kind of. Oh, like it was a, like a dance. Two on two, like, yeah, dance yeah, yeah. kind of uh, date that they went on. And so uh, Tesu brought him there as well. And so once Tesu, uh, once Chunha and Chuhi meet once again in, in the city or in the town, they kind of uh, fall in love with each other and they kind of meet secretly behind yeah. Tesu's back and also, you know, hi hiding from their parents. Yeah. And while that's happening in the present day, Jihye, the daughter of Juhi, she also falls in love with an, a guy named Sangmin, yeah. who is part of the theater club. And uh, her friend Sukyung is very like outgoing and very like pushy. Right. And she's uh, she like joins the club, theater club, and she tries to like get with Sangmin because he's like the popular like theater right. guy Ooh. who's good looking and stuff. <laughs> And so, like, you know, Chihe tries to, you know, she, she just, like, tags along, right. you know, for everything. Um, but she's one, playing third wheel. Yeah, she she, likes she's him too. yeah <laughs> she's playing third wheel. And one day, uh, Chihe forgets her umbrella, and she's stuck under a tree. And Sangmin, like, just comes out of nowhere mm. and uh, offers to uh, take her to the library where she's... Uh, was trying to go and so they both go together to the library and kind of Jie, uh you know has like butterflies in her stomach and all that and typical romance stuff you know right right <laughs> it, it, it's that like moment of like <gasps> does he like me does he not like we had that that moment that moment that together moment yeah and so back in, uh, we go back in the past and Juna is traumatized by uh, his best friend's attempted suicide. Yeah. When when um, the father finds out that uh, Chuna has been secretly exchanging letters in the name of Tesu. Yeah. Between Chuhi and then the father's like, "Bro, what are you doing? I thought you I, were supposed to marry her. You need to get married to her so that I can get more power, right? But dad. Right. And and so because of that, Tesu was about to suicide so that you know Chuhi and Chuna can um, sure. be together. Um, so after being traumatized by that, Chuna decides to um, disappear from Tesu and Chuhi's life. Mm. And so before he leaves, he leaves the necklace behind, and he enlists on the in the army, and he is sent to Vietnam. And right before he was about to go to Vietnam, Chuhi like finds him on the train, yeah. and he she gives him back the necklace, and Chunha takes the necklace and he. Um, in Vietnam, he almost loses it, um, and he like goes to find the necklace again. And while he's coming back, he basically uh, loses his eyesight. Yeah. And after that, 
he comes back from the war and he meets Chu uh, Yi again. But because he's blind, he didn't want to tell Chu Yi that, you know, he's blind or he wants her to live happily ever after without thinking about him anymore. So he um, acts like he's married and that, you know, he's, you know, he's moved on from her. And after hearing that uh, Chu he uh, marries Tesu yeah. and they, you know, they marry. And then, <laughs> that, and, and, then and then after that, after that, uh, Chun Ha um, gets married on his own. It's like a backstory, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, later on, uh, we find out that Chun Ha passes away he dies and his last wish was that chu he would um, take his ashes and um, throw it in the river where uh they first met right and so that's how basically the past story ends and then back in the present um Jie finds out that um sangmin um wasn't there under the tree by accident he was actually uh, watching her at this um, shop nearby and seeing that it was raining he actually had an umbrella but yeah. then he decided to um, you know leave the umbrella at the shop and then go to the tree to you know do the the moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to to be with uh, Jie and act like he yeah. didn't have an umbrella as well so that he could kind of you know get with her and Jie finds this out and after finding out, he, she and uh, Sangmin, they kind of confirm their love for each other. And they, and Jia suggests that they go on a date to the river where they first met, uh, where his, her mother first met right. um, the, her lover or whatever. And she starts telling um, Sangmin about the story about Chuhi's, um love story. And there, uh, Sangmin reveals um, a necklace that he always had, and it is the necklace that um, Chuna had, yeah. um, revealing that uh, Sangmin was uh, Chuna's son, yeah. and that Juhi and Chun, uh, Juhi and no, Jihye <laughs> and Sangmin are the descendants of uh, Chuna the and Juhi, yeah. Oh. And that their love is finally manifest through their children. <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> and that's basically how the story ends. Yes. Very weird. <laughs> <laughs> Not weird at all. Totally normal. Yeah. Why don't we talk about that? <laughs> what the, do you think about that? The ending? That kind of story. I mean, like I knew it was coming. Yeah. Like for one. Right. right. I was like, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. sure, fine. But it's like, <laughs> I mean, I mean l- let me ask you, like, do you find that romantic? <laughs> it's not really. I feel like it's kind of creepy. <laughs> you know, it's like, just weird. like over the top, like fairy tale. And quality, it, yeah, you know? I mean, I understand it's it's playing on the idea of fate, right? right yeah. And like, you know, uh-huh. they're meant to love each other, and and you know, mm. through even through their bloodline, they all come together. <laughs> It sounds like some like weird vampire story. Yeah, like I don't know what's going so, on here. Yeah, it feels very. <laughs> yeah, not like it just played so like, like it, this is fine. Like this is this is natural, but it's like not not really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, in in some ways it feels like it's like so, f- like fatefully like matched together. Like yeah, yeah. it almost feels forced. <laughs> it, it's too tied together. Yeah, it's too <laughs> it's like too tied together. linked together. <laughs> <laughs> and and it gives that weird vibe because for me like especially for the Sangmin character mm. i feel like like we get no yeah. like backstory on who he is that guy's a nobody and he's just like at the end we just he just pops <laughs> the necklace necklace bro <laughs> i got it you know yeah yeah and so it, it has that it's like such an easy gimme right yeah it, it just kind of has that feeling of like it's just a gimmick yeah right yeah, yeah. at the end yeah <laughs> it's like and oh so, of course yeah right. yeah right sure and so that kind of you know threw me for a loop I, I i think for this movie um yeah do you think that like if we cut out like the present story and we were just left with like the past of uh of the mom so she has story like would all be well you think that that would have worked it would 
I think in principle, but I think in in terms of a story, I feel like it might lack a little. I like it, like if they fleshed out the story of the past and then they and then they just made that the story, I think it would it would work. Right. right but right. what 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 we have right now, it's a little like. Sure. I think they need to add a right. little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I I definitely like the past story more than the present story. Right. Uh, and. This is a thing, right? This is something that I kind of thought about um, while watching this movie. It kind of reminded me of the other movie that we watched called Ditto. Remember that movie? Yeah. Where it was the radio and then the girl, I think her name was uh, Soon, and uh, Jin was the yeah. guy from the present and then okay. Soon was the girl from the past. Yeah. And they start having that like Conver- conversation the, together the and they try to like, you know, talk about like their love uh, that they had mm-hmm. and then later on remember like at the end um the guy f- figures out that it was his father and then the and then the girl uh that uh liked uh tone who whose home likes is actually his father mm. you remember that yeah yeah yeah. yeah. and it, it kind of reminds oh, me of that like kind of like that like bloodline like like relation kind of thing that kind of yeah, makes yeah. it all weird. Oh, yeah. Like he went back to the school that she was at. Yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. Like met her and. Wait, the he goes back to his old home and he looks at the pictures and he realizes that the Soen was his father. Like and they know yeah, they knew yeah, each yeah. other. Uh-huh. And then like from t- from hearing what she said, he realizes that Soen liked his father, but then they never got together. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it kind of feels like that, but in reverse in this movie. <laughs> right. And I, I, and I'm kind of wondering, like, there it's fine because, like, they don't get together. Yeah. It, it's just like, oh, it's a misconnection. Right, like, right, like right. it ended up being like a misconnection kind of thing. But, like, it worked out because there was, like, a far enough. No, no but I, what I'm saying but, is, like, I feel like th- he tried to do that with this movie, but, but like, reverse. Opposite. Yeah, yeah. Where it's <laughs> like, like, no, they actually get together. They actually get together. <laughs> and so I'm like, this, did he watch that movie? And he's trying to, like, sh- like change it up a bit. Right? He's like, that was such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like it's weird. I feel like for this movie, um, like, like it's not that it doesn't work, uh-huh. but I feel like because it's so outlandish in the way <laughs> that it it presents itself, like right. the fantasy of it, uh-huh. it kind of takes away from the romance of it. Yeah, I see what you mean. You know, yeah, like yeah. It, uh, uh, it, it feels more like it's going for I don't know, like like shock value versus than like. Just like the pure, pure like, romance. like yeah, because yeah. like I, I never really felt like that like crazy connection between Sangmin and Chihe. Mm. Um, exactly. Right. Like, there's and, never really that moment where like you kind of feel like they really like each other. Right. There's like just like I mean, like, it's like little bits and pieces of it. Right. Because we get so little of their time. Yeah. And like there are those moments like. Like we talk about, like him. Like I mean, that is the moment, right? The, right. The that's the moment. Scene. And then there's also like the little moments with the present, like the two right. present. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. all that's like like underhand a little bit. Like that's kind of exactly. Like, you're supposed to kind of work to realize it, I guess. Right. But I mean, I mean yeah. it, like he is trying to show his, you know, affection towards her through right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it because you it's not realize. like well because it's not like literally we're not literally seeing him right. It's just like this moment where she reflects on the present Mm -hmm. and she wonders about it it's not necessarily like us seeing these two characters like falling in love on the screen so i think the impact of it is a lot less yeah because it's all supposed to work for like the ending like it's because they don't even know well like she's doubting that well she likes him but then she doubts that she that he even likes her back because you know the whole time she thinks that uh sun ming likes her friend but then like the the whole payoff like event is supposed to be at the end when she finishes the story and then like oh like we're fated to be loved yeah. and then like they're kind of together or whatever but like it's like none of that it's just like there's so much focus on the past story and there's not enough of like the present story that there, like i said there is not really investment mm-hmm. from like me or like an audience for uh Sangmin or jinhe or jinhe at all really it's yeah like, yeah and even like I don't know, there's, like, there is no chemistry between them. Anyway. Like, it's, <laughs> like, like you said, there is no, like, actual moments that they're looking at each other in the eye. Or, they like, really share something. Yeah, yeah. It's all just, yeah. like, 
Whereas I don't in know, the past, so at least there's like a lot of moments between the two characters, right? Like right. the dancing scene, or even like in the rain, mm-hmm. or even in the beginning when they, you know, the firefly and stuff like that. Like there's plenty of moments like that. Right. <laughs> like the present stuff just feels like it's piggybacking off of all of that. Pretty much, yeah. yeah it is. It yeah. is literally doing that, and it just kind of feels weak. Yeah. It's it's just weird that like it's a. It's a it is a proxy for the romance that we should have gotten in the, in the past. past. Yeah. And instead it's like, oh no, but it's the tie in to like But it just feels like a weaker version of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it a much weaker version of it. Because it's like there are two different people at the end of the day. Mm. And it's like, ah, we don't really care about them though. Yeah. So I see what you're doing, but at the same time, meh. Mm. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So I don't I don't know. But what about um, uh, Song Jean playing both characters between her mother? Uh, and I didn't her really mind it. I didn't mind it. It, I th- it, it worked. Yeah, I yeah. think it worked. I thought it was funny. How <laughs> I missed my opportunity. I was gonna make a joke. I was gonna be like, "Man, your daughter looks so much like your daughter. It's like it's so uncanny." Isn't the it mother, weird? you mean? <laughs> the mother. Yeah, there's that moment at the end when the guy who delivers the mail. Yeah, he's like, like "Hey, are you oh. Chewy?" <laughs> She's like, "No." I get that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we should have just gotten um, June Hall to play the younger version, his son. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> that would have been weird. Well, they probably didn't do that because, yeah, like it just that would have been too much. <laughs> too much, yeah. That would have been just too much. <laughs> now we're into some like weird multiverse thing, <laughs> <laughs> reincarnation stuff. <laughs> like, come back alive. Oh no! Yeah, that was funny. I thought it was a good job, though. But it was just kind of funny to see, like, oh, yeah, of course. Of course mm. She's going to come back and play the mom. Yeah. No big deal. Just change the guy's face. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like, I guess at the end of the day, it's, um, like, all the payoff stuff at the end just doesn't, like, seep through 100%, mm. I guess. And I think that's, like, maybe the major problem that I had with the movie. Where it's, like... I don't know, like, it, like everything is kind of cliche, everything kind of works, but then, like, at the end of it all, it's like, ah, uh, fine. Whatever. Yeah. That way. Uh, we could talk about, like, just some of the stuff in the middle. Like, we talked about the movie's kind of convoluted, where that it is a, it is in a lot of places in different times. Like, we get that it's, like, a flashbacky backstory kind of thing that it's going for mm. but we do spend a lot of time mostly in the flashbacks uh in the past but like i mean there's kind of a good flow in like time anyway like we go back between like i guess they're in high school in the beginning and they end up like as adults at the very end and there's like there's like a very brief period of like them in college when he goes to when he enlists in the army yeah right? and i guess like some years pass when he post injury and stuff like that but it is it is a little convoluted in like the like political romantic drama of it all, I guess. What do you mean political romantic? Like, well, I guess like she's okay, like she's a sheltered like daughter. The reason yeah. why they can't be together is like because of that essentially. Mm. There's like the whole thing with uh, Te Tesu. Tesu. Tesu's a weird guy too. Yeah, he's a very weird guy. <laughs> what an interesting character. Yeah, he, he's kind of like whatever yeah the thing about tezu character i feel like is he's basically just a like a yes man or like just whatever like the situation needs him to be he is you know yeah he just gets like walked all over Mm -hmm. for everything and so i don't know it, it doesn't really make for a very like like interesting character i think just like mm. in terms of like like He's like, oh yeah, my friend uh, is like dating the girl that I I like now. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. sure, I'll, you know. But we put so much like pressure on like avoiding that at the same time, mm. you know. We're like, Jun Ho and Ji Hye are like obviously in this like forbidden romance or whatever, and they're like yeah. having their moments. But then like, oh, I can't, we can't do this together because exactly, yeah. I'm in this, you know, whatever relationship yeah. with Taesu, and like I'm supposed to like arrange marriage. And you're like, oh, but. It'll be fine, and then, but like they're they're like doing that like drama part, 
and then they're like trying to tiptoe like around Tesu. Yeah. But then when he finds out, it's like ah, it's like all of that whatever. too. Even even like the writing the letter stuff, she's just kind of like brushes it off. It's like oh, that's you silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you of course it was you. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, what? <laughs> like, you know, those things kind of you know fall a little. Yeah, the payoff is like kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> supposed to be like some kind of tension there, but then. Uh-huh. Like when it's it revealed, fizzles it's out, like, yeah, 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 it all just fizzles out, right? Right, instead, it goes into like a weirdly dark place with Tesu. It's like, oh, I've just been abused mm. all my life, and, yeah. And I, I mean, that know? part I can kind of get, but it's just like everything else, just like it's just thrown out the window, and then <laughs> they just go to that. So it's it's really, you know, it, it, I mean, they did it obviously as a mechanism so that mm. you know, uh, Juna kind of faces a like a cliff and right. he just decides to leave um no i can't be with any of you <laughs> but yeah I, I, it just kind of feels like cliche that's why you know right those kind of things make it kind of feel like oh yeah i can't be with you anymore i gotta leave and then yeah. like without no. any like real yeah like, i think that's the problem it's like it's <clears throat> doing those things but without any like real reason or like real tension behind it mm-hmm. it's just like it's just actually there mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah there's nothing like driving it i feel like or nothing like like strong enough strong driving enough it driving, right? right there there's something but it's like eh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you could work around it if i mean i mean like it. i mean to be fair like the suicide thing is a strong enough like sure, thing yeah. for him to decide to leave mm-hmm. but it just feels like all the other stuff kind of like they just they were like okay we're done with this now and then they <laughs> moved on to that right right uh how'd you feel about like the whole war bit so that, that was that was a, the worst part that was funny to me because i go all right we're in romance land and all of a sudden i'm watching teguki <laughs> <laughs> like what happened <laughs> yeah i yeah, so it was bad <laughs> I, all the i think up to the suicide part, I think was okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> everything after that kind of was like the the war stuff, the blind stuff, that the was, future stuff, like the, the war present stuff, stuff. Like that was, it was kind of long. Uh, like it was a little longer than I than I thought it was. I was like, okay, fine. That like after the suicide, like that breaks them up, which is okay, fine. And then like then it goes. Then we're in the present for a little while. And then we go back to the past, like some years have passed. And then that, that, that's when she's like, uh, Juhi's like, oh, I know the rest of the story from here. Like, I didn't have to like, yeah. read the letters, essentially. So it's kind of like she's telling it as she knows it. Um, and then it turns out that um, uh, Tesu's like, okay, you know, whatever. And then they, they all kind of reunite. And then like, oh, no, uh, Juno is going to go into the army and then like, whatever. But then they spend like a little while while he's fighting in there. And it's like, this whole thing with the necklace part scene and it's like it's just like a really long scene just to dramatize him getting injured basically yeah. and i think that's like the biggest issue and then like like really what shot me in the foot was okay like some years have passed that they didn't talk and then now they're adults and then he like meets her and all of a sudden he's blind and it's like what <laughs> it's like but why is he blind i mean he got he got exploded yeah, but come on like <laughs> what do you mean come on <laughs> gonna pick something up like that. Up. It, was just, it just felt way left field for me he got blown up what do you I mean felt like he lost his eyesight he could he could have done you could have done the whole scene with them being dramatically injured and just been like the whole point was like for her to live happily after after like don't worry about me like you could have done that without you well it's more dramatic if he's blind well, exactly but that's what i'm saying it's like dramatizing and like pulling the rug for like shock sake and exactly. shock sake only what did you want that's what you get from a romance melodrama man god dang this person who wrote this quack but um like the movie feels like it's reverse engineered to come to a, the finishing like the end point you know what I mean? Like, like that came first. Yeah, exactly. Know? Like he, I think he was kind of like, oh, how can I make it so that the um, the children of these people mm. can fall in love? And sure, then sure. he kind of started reverse engineering, like, okay, so it like, starts. This with... will happen, <laughs> and then that will happen, and then he kind of like yeah. reverse engineered it to make sure that it 
it goes that way, which like in in theory, I don't think it's like a bad thing, but I feel like um, when he did it in practice, it just kind of feels a little too forced. Sure. And everything feels like 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 um, somebody is like um, playing the puppeteer and like moving all the things and just making sure yeah, that yeah. everything works yeah. rather than it feeling like a natural progression of some story. Right. You know, like an organic flow, basically. Yeah. Kind of like it. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, that's kind of what happens. So you can feel just like, okay, I've got like this point and this plot point, And like from here, I got to go to like from B, I got to go to C. Like, how, like, how like for me, the most like, uh, pl- like glaring thing that happened that feel felt like that was like the necklace mm. like is it's like okay now i gotta give the necklace to you <laughs> and then you gotta give it back to me <laughs> and now and I, I gotta, gotta give it back, back to you <laughs> and then sangmin has to have it <laughs> and uh, he's the son so that's right. the twist yeah it, it just felt a little too like on the nose like sure, the sure. necklace thing is like Ta-da, I'm of course song. of course we're meant right. to be together <laughs> imagine they break up because <laughs> they're like in college like imagine like they're just like ah, i don't like that's, it anymore that's for the epilogue <laughs> that's for the after after story exactly it's like oh maybe the, maybe the fate thing wasn't that big of a deal that's, that's a <laughs> they were they were fated to never be in love actually so yeah it just they didn't work out it, 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 it's just funny the notion that like your children like it, it, the funny thing is like it feels like the children don't have any autonomy you know what i mean right they're like right. bound to the fate of their parents yeah whereas like it's like what if i just like a different dude you know <laughs> like like is it am i not allowed to like like somebody else you know right like, right like it feels so like bound by the 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 rule of fate there was no other human being you can't be with anybody you else you know like <laughs> it had to be him just that guy uh, yeah, yeah, uh, maybe that's the thing that doesn't really resonate with me in this <laughs> for this movie, right? Which is why it, you know, like it is a romance movie, but like, for me, it was kind of like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's all foretold without without me emotionally. Having I can see like, okay, yeah, but like logically thinking about it, like in the real world, it's like no, yeah, <laughs> it's just so out, like yeah, it just works it's so from, like, nonsensical, you know? It just works from like. Like, it's, like, a neat story. It just works for a story perspective. Like, mm. like oh, like, it's all fate. Like, oh, like, again, like, the fairy tale quality. Like, it all works from a... Yeah. Just, like, making a nice, like, story kind of romance mm. factor to it. But don't look any deeply <laughs> into that, I guess, you know? And that's pretty much about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, thinking about the other, like, in the present, the uh, the friend, uh, Sun Kwong, right? Su Kyung. Su Kyung. It's like, there's like that whole thing that he probably likes her and that like he's trying to go after her and then the tables turn by the end. <laughs> and then the scene where like he slaps her or oh. she slaps him and then he slaps her back and they're like, it's an applause. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Like only in a movie. Like that was pinnacle. Like uh, that only in a movie. <laughs> that's like, that's like his, uh, my sassy girl coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just my sassy girl comedy coming out. A hundred percent. But the funny thing about that too is like, you can tell he has no care for Su Kyung at all. <laughs> like, like there's not even like a yeah. a sense that he likes her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like she like is clinging on to him, but like you, you can tell he doesn't he give a rat's ass about yeah, it. At that point, he's like, no, no. Yeah. What didn't really resonate with me was like, I mean, I, you you can, I mean, like, it's all kind of easy to guess that, you know, they're going to get together by the end and that obviously that she likes him and that maybe he likes her or whatever, but it's not explicitly clear. But then after, like, the beginning route was like he left the umbrella in the store and that he was like, I noticed you. And then I had that magical moment that mm-hmm. happened or whatever. And then when she realizes she runs through the rain like all dramatic and delivers him the umbrella and then that's when he confesses he was like oh i didn't want to tell you <laughs> yeah <laughs> like directly i wanted to like you know be able to show you i thought it would have worked if i wouldn't it was like this whole like spewel but like i don't know i just did it like i was like is that your reasoning the whole yeah. time like it's so stupid 
Yeah. I wanted the letter to reach you. And even the, the present thing is yeah. like, oh, I bought two presents <laughs> yeah. because I didn't want to like, you know, uh-huh. be obvious or whatever. But it was like, it was like, even in that was complex for no reason, right? Yeah. Because he's like, oh, I bought you two present for like, because we were hanging, literally because we were just hanging out today. And he like shakes the box, like take this one essentially. And then she takes it and then that was supposed to trigger the friend to be like swapping nah, it. nah nah yeah. yeah 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 and then coming back and like taking her box it was and like he's like oh if it's fate then uh you'll get the right like, box it's like, like okay <laughs> but it was like that's like tie in like like i knew that you were gonna be jealous of her from taking the box yeah. so i like baited you with like it's complicated for no <laughs> it's so like, com- convoluted you know They're like yo I'm like playing 40 chess right now. <laughs> exactly. We're adding like layers for what? Yeah. And then by the end, she's like, that letter wasn't even for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then and man. then the letter is supposed to be the same letter that uh, Chuna wrote before. Right, right. And stuff like that. It, yeah. Some things that I did like. Um, I like the repetition of the theme mm. um, in in the movie like it in the actual scenes and then it actually um comes out in the soundtrack like for example like that main um the the main theme that they play um when the two people are in the rain when they're under the under the tree that that, yeah that ost yeah that is like repeated in the movie like the violinists play it and yeah. like like I think when they're in the dance they play it for a little bit too mm. so like that repetition of it and then it, it like uh, climaxing into this like moment at the um, under the tree moment I think is pretty good way of like building up to it um, with sound with, like with music mm. so I like that I like the like the foreshadowing of like when in the very beginning when Sangmin when like uh, the shop owner and and uh Jie are like kind of like mingling and like whispering about Sangmin. He's like eating ramen, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then and then like it's raining outside and like he has an umbrella. Right. Like at right. that moment he has that black umbrella and like he actually uses it. Yeah. And then it's kind of like a foreshadowing of like later on when he like leaves the, the black umbrella and yeah, then yeah. so that was kind of cool. <laughs> the umbrella um, is special to me because Sangmin gave it to me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Yeah, and then she's like way too old. Yo, she's like, she's like not like even really... in the age group at all. <laughs> but she's like hanging out with them like she's uh, a fellow college student. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, those are some things that I, I, I think I liked um, mm-hmm. in the movie that they kind of um, were mindful of, which I, I liked. Yeah. I mean, everything was like, I guess you have to give credit, like everything was done purposely mm. and ended up working as far as like tying knots and like, yeah. everything kind of coming full circle yeah. with every, like there wasn't a stone left unturned you could say yeah right i really like i think my f- my favorite part or aspect was the just like the subtle scene and i guess it was foreshadowing but like at that point it was like well duh was when um like they're all um j uh juhi and and uh, something they're like already on that date on the park, and like she's telling the story, but not to him yet. And I think it was like right after. I think it was like right after she was like, "I know the story from here." Part, and um, that's when we found out that um, Tesu was like he's like fine now, and then she like they do like the with the hair. Bit, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like she does it, and then like it goes back, and he does it. Yeah, it's and like, he no. and she does that in the very beginning of the movie too. Right, right. So it's kind of a callback to that, mm-hmm. and that's like, oh, and you're the daughter of that mm-hmm. guy for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was an, that was like a really nice little touch. And then later on, sure. they show the wedding like photo, and they're like, okay, they are real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't get it by now, yeah, there you go. If you didn't go. get it by now, we'll show you the picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Here's your proof. Mm. Here's your proof. And they did that like at that very end, like even after she was born, like when she was a child already. Yeah, that was uh, that was funny. I like the uh, the art gallery scene when it's kind of like that tracking shot. Oh yeah, and, <laughs> and then, they come and they're yeah. like posing in the statue. And then they keep like you know like they 
they swipe with like a an art piece. Yeah. And then you see the the Sugyoung and Sangmi in the back like doing like poses and all that. And at the end, there's like that little kid who's like <laughs> thinking. <laughs> and, then, and, then the, and then the teacher gets uh, uh yeah. What is what do you guys call that again? Dongchim. Dongchim. That's <laughs> yeah. what it is. Uh, I forget what we call it. We we have a different name for it in you know, Japanese. Yeah. Uh, in Naruto, it's a thousand years of death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's that, a lot of scenes in the movie that's very, um, like they're funny and they're like interesting. Yeah, uh, well, that's like his comedy. That's what I was saying earlier. Yeah. Like that's like his like just comedy kind of coming out, mm-hmm. and it happens like it happens a lot. Like there's a yeah, lot yeah, of that. yeah. I mean, especially with like Tesla, like all of his bits are weird and quirky mm-hmm. like that. Like he comes in, he's got like the reverse mohawk thing going on mm-hmm. for no explanation yeah at all and then like he shaves his head and then it grows back and then he shaves his head again yeah and then he does like even like the haunted house scene yep yep um there's a lot the, the whole like <laughs> manure the whole manure scene oh yeah the manure the, scene this like random like theme of shit <laughs> like the, the scene when like they have to go collect like poop yep yep for like checkup and they all split yeah. and to go find somewhere to poop. Oh my god! Just like it's dumb funny. It's like <laughs> why? Uh, the, the, like that and the obsession with like men's ass cheeks. Like <laughs> there's there's so many like guys bare butts in this movie. Yeah. What's not to like about this movie? I guess. <laughs> um. Not he too. Oh, dude, she's <laughs> yeah. so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? Why is it that they made all the side characters so like obnoxious and annoying? <laughs> yeah. Like it's. Just, it, I mean, good job, but like it's just so like they're just so like hateable. They they, they sell it too hard. They're like it, it's just like they like really push the main character to be likable just because of the fact that the side characters are like. <laughs> totally annoying right it's like yeah of course who would not like the main character if you if you're comparing them to this <laughs> to character Nahi, yeah like get out of here i'm it, glad you're already there for five minutes it's a little too caricaturist i feel like you know like the characters right even sugyang even nahi you know they're all like even tesu tesu feels like, like it's like a like <laughs> the silly a, best friend silly like, like yeah but he just acts like a bum too <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, he's, he's like, pinnacle well, airhead yeah like, yeah yeah, it, it it like Taste is an interesting bit because he's like, he's the best friend for the main character, and it's obviously like we're we're doing the forbidden like love thing, yeah. right? And typically, like the best friend would be maybe a little more straight. Like Taste would probably be a little more straight, and that there would be like this whole friendship falling out part or some kind of like tension going on, or like you know, like they try doing the fight scene bit, like that's there. Like it's all like on its head because Tessu yeah. is such a passive character, yeah. right? Like it all, it's all doesn't work typically as you would think because Tessu is just like this huge bum airhead person, right? Which I guess is like neat in itself that it's okay. Now we're doing something new, but I don't know. Just for the fact that he's like so passive <laughs> yeah I, I just feel bad for him though it's like <laughs> yeah it's like he just marries a girl that doesn't even love him and he knows it and he, no that's what i'm saying he yeah. knows it and he, he and like it's just it's just like what about hey man doesn't he get a love story <laughs> it's kind of messed up you know he's such a device like yeah he's yeah i mean all, all of the side characters really feel that way you know mm. it's like it's like other movies you kind of feel like uh, side characters have their own lives as well. Right. But in this movie, it's just like they're literally just there <laughs> to be a foil for the main characters mm-hmm. or like, you know. Yeah. They're not really driving anything for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even like, I mean, they kind of try doing it with Taysu a little bit because he's you know, he's like, oh, I'm not the type of guy to like just one girl. Yeah. He keeps saying that, but then he's like, oh, but I really like this girl. But there's no like he it's never just words. Flirts with another girl. It's just <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah. yeah, no, I like I like G, I like Chuhi. Yeah. I thought that's why I thought like, are they gonna do something with him and Nahi uh-huh. when when that happened? Yeah, because like they're both like airheads. You know, they're they're, <laughs> they're both kind of silly in that way. But it's like at the end of the day, he's like, no, I just like Chuhi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just 
It, uh, and then what was what was the point of the freaking like him fainting on the ground? <laughs> I think it was just like a, to be funny. Like, <laughs> like that didn't. If that was there for comedy, it did not. So I was genuinely because I was like, is this guy like has cancer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is there like a brain tumor going? Yeah, he has some kind of you know. Like, so some kind of he keeps having this weird syncope going on, and I'm yep. like, I need an explanation. <laughs> And then like he, then he like commits suicide. I'm like, oh, that's tragic. But that isn't the reason why like yeah. you fainting. It, yeah, that was just retarded. That was just ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, what's funny is like literally the second I saw Nahi on screen, I was like, she's definitely like a klutz. And then the next shot is her like bumping into the student in the dance circle and like not having a place to sit. And I was like, I nailed that. <laughs> oh, you see her in the very beginning in the countryside too. Oh, oh yeah, kind of like standing in the back. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, I forgot about that. Um, what else? What something else that I found weird was the um, they have like this thing that uh, Juno like meets her outside of her house, right? And like, there's this whole thing with like the light lamp post. Mm. Why is there a light switch? On a street lamp post. I think it's it's like her house light like lamp posting, uh, but that's a thing. Guess so. You guys have those? I don't know. Push I'm not mark. in Korea. <laughs> is I'm that, not Korea? If you're in Korea, is that is that a legit thing? Maybe. Do you own a light post like outside of your house? I don't have that. You you're don't not have that in Korea. This <laughs> is true. <laughs> I live in a cold design. We don't. I don't live on a main road either. Yeah. Overall, I think the movie. Uh, it has a lot of issues, I think, in terms of just, uh, if I don't you know, look, I, 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 I never felt like it was like really, I, the, did it break immersion? The thing thinking. is like, you know, we're, we're, we're like, you know, these are under the genre of romance. I just feel like for me, it doesn't really captivate that like emotion of like that, romance emotion right at least for me mm -hmm. but uh i mean in korea it did well so i mean <laughs> it must have been doing they don't agree right. with you but it, it might also be because of you know where i am at just like in terms of like sure. who i am mm -hmm. right yeah just like personality wise are you, are you saying you're, you're goody two shoes <laughs> no i'm just for... saying that i'm i just uh, have stone cold emotions <laughs> <laughs> you see who I talk to every week? You see? But, uh, yeah, but, I mean, I think there are flaws, but I think as a movie, it's not, like, bad to watch. Right. I, there's nothing, like, glaringly, like, oh, man, this is, like, a big problem. Right. Um, well, like I said, like, it really is doing everything, I feel, for, like, just selling it. Like, for everything for, like, entertainment's sake, which which I think works for, like, like an audience that it's going for in a way, which is probably why it's like super su successful. I mean, like for me, like it does feel that it is trying too hard a lot of the times, but then again, like, I guess that works for, you know, a lot of people at the same time, you know, I mean, like if you're going to go in, you go in a hundred percent. I think that's what the movie is definitely doing. And it's got like all the right recipes, right? I mean, like it's got romance, like it's not, like you know like legit like it's like make-believe romance which is fine like everything it's got like the twists and the turns and like it's like the aha moments sort of things right it's funny like it's got comedy in there like it's got all the recipes that you need and it, like it works to be like an entertaining romance movie yeah like just just to be like we talked about like it is a, like a pinnacle uh like romance genre just just a cliche like it's huge mm -hmm. cliche I mean the the name of the movie is quite fitting for yeah, the literally. for the movie. So yeah, so, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean like full circle again. Like that's brings me back to like the first question. Like it just feels like you you name this after like the cliche. Like this is a classical romance, mm. you know, movie in that in that way. Yeah. So I give it uh, two tomatoes. I don't know. <laughs> So what's the mo next movie that we're gonna watch in the series? Um, something even worse. I don't know. I haven't seen this one. What do you think? Is it better or worse? Uh, we'll find out. We are watching a moment to remember. Uh, also starring Sun Jae In. 
Son Yejin. Son Yejin. <laughs> I, I said that. You and your Korean uh, names. I, I definitely said that. Um, <laughs> this one came out in 2004. So uh, a year, year after, after this. Yeah. Right? yeah. Directed by John H. Lee. Um, man, you were making movies back in 2004, Lee? Uh, is that my name? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember being John. <laughs> Like John Doe, but you, you went John Lee. <laughs> John Lee. Um, but yeah, like I was, I was telling Lee off the air, like funny story. I kept seeing this movie like around the past couple of days. Like it was, uh, there's like, if you're familiar with Asian Crush, which is like, um, like a streaming service, but they also have like a television channel apparently. And it was like playing in the background on my TV. And I caught the attention of my dad. He was like, this looks interesting. What is this? And he like went to guide and it was like a moment to remember. And I was like, that kind of sounds familiar, but I don't know why. He was like, like mental bookmark. And then I'm doing notes today and I'm like, usually I'll have like the next movie on my outline. And it's like, a, I copy paste it a moment to remember without a second thought. And I'm like, I'm like seeing it back to back. And I'm like, oh, the main actress is in this movie. I'm like, why is that weird to me? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be watching it. This. this is like what we're doing next week. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a dumb moment on my part. It's cool. But hey, you know it's it's got to be popular if it's everywhere. You know, uh, yeah, apparently. it's it's a lot more heart wrenching. <laughs> it seems more, I mean, a hundred percent more melodramatic. Yeah, like definitely, definitely sad romance territory. Yes, instead of like, I mean, this. See, that's it. Like this kind of like this isn't really sad romance either. This movie was like. It is. It's sad. They kind never of, get together like, in the past. Maybe more like traumatizing romance. It's more like it's more like a sad romance in the past and like a hopeful one in the present. Right. Kind of okay. Thing. Fine. Yeah. Makes me take a key. <laughs> <laughs> but this one definitely seems like a like a Debbie Downer for sure. Mm. To remember. Yes. So. Uh, it sure is. Seems, seems interesting. Something about. Is it the guy or the girl that can't remember? You'll that, find out. That, that's some, something, <laughs> something like some, you'll find out. Some kind of like you're trying to make me spoil the whole movie for you right now. It's like, what's of, the point of you're watching? Not, you're thing? not. You know what? You see this? He's not allowed to do synopsis <laughs> anymore. Hey, I think I it didn't even pass five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the counter is three minutes, <laughs> not five hey. minutes. Hey, whatever we need to do to get it done. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Okay. This one had a lot of moving parts. <laughs> on on need, needlessly mo- many moving parts. <laughs> We could have, we could have omitted it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that'll be next week, and um, more on the romance train. So see you guys then. Uh, just a quick shout out: we do have a Patreon page. Come and check out for some exclusive episodes. We just wrapped up uh, "Drive My Car," so if you're interested in that movie, you should see what we have to say. Come and check it out. Other than that, you can follow us, Twitter, Instagram, past subtitles, and tell us what your favorite romance movie is. Yeah. And if you like this one or not. Other than that, see you next week. Peace. Bye.